Good morning, everybody. This is Lizzie and Justin, and we are in this moment turning towards life. This is our unrehearsed conversation for this week, and we are almost, I think, three years into this, Justin. I can feel the kind of autumn being the three year mark somehow. And it's quite something to be doing this in spite of whatever else is happening in our lives and continuing. And then this morning, I feel particularly appreciative of the of of what it takes just to orient our weekends and our everydayness around this. And it's such a joy and such a a lovely thing for each of us also, I think, Justin, to receive the source that each of us posts on the Friday, certainly for me this week, receiving this and seeing how it, even though I didn't choose it, has dovetailed into my feeling and thinking and reflecting this week. And so I really feel the connection as well and the the openness that each of us has to the sources each, each other brings. And it's really beautiful, this, this source by Mark Nepo. So I'm grateful that we're all here. I'm grateful for our community and for all of the ways that you interact with each other if you're listening and reflecting on this and also interacting with us if you make comments or anything like that or reviews on Spotify or whatever. It just feels like it's building. And again, this week happened, Justin, that I saw somebody who said that they were listening to us. And of course, I never met him. I don't know him. And... I was introduced to him by a friend and he said, oh, 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 you're, you're Lizzie from Turning Towards Life. And I kind of, I'm always shocked because I think there's something about doing things virtually that part of me doesn't really believe this goes anywhere or anyone else sees it. It's just us sitting here because <laughs> in my body, that's all I can see is you. And so it's such a joy to feel the effect that this is having on people and for people to tell me when I meet them what it's like to listen to us and I feel like uh, like it's a process also to receive the gift back of how it is for people to be in this conversation with us and I, I, I mostly feel disbelief and kind of shock that anyone's even listening and I think that's because it's a virtual space and it just feels like you and I, which is also what makes it beautiful. So I'm just appreciative of all the all of you who I haven't met and who are listening and how generous it is for you to be here and to, to listen in the way that you do. And then if I occasionally meet one of you and you say what you say, it's like somehow a, like a validation of us doing this which is really important and I'm really grateful that that happens and you're very welcome. You know, I want to just say to everybody, you're very welcome and we are so grateful that you're here and it gives us a, a very, very supportive structure to, to be in a practice, which is really hard to keep doing something again and again, but this doesn't feel hard because we're, we're I feel so supported in doing it. And one and meeting one person kind of keeps me going for like, you know, ever. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for this source, Justin, as well. Mm. Well, you know, Lizzie, I um I really echo everything that you've just said about what it is to have anybody who listens and who is part of this conversation. And it it's striking me. I'm just adjusting a little shade for my camera here. I think those of you on audio won't be able to see this, but I'm, I'm glaring sunshine here. So, um, it 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 really strikes me that um, so much of what happens in human life happens because of how we speak and how we listen to one another. And so, there's something very significant about the act of of making community around a conversation and then being in conversation. So I'm equally deeply grateful for all of you who show up, the many, many, many of you who listen to this, many of you who we don't know. And um, I want to keep saying, as we always do, that this is connected to our work at Third Space, and you can go and check out what Third Space is about at wearethirdspace.org. But more importantly, there's a conversation you can take part in, if you wish, on our Facebook group, which is just turning towards life. And... Um, there's a really lovely moving conversation that happens in the comments below each 
one of these conversations. So, um, and the other part in response to what you're saying, Lizzie, is um, I woke up this morning, as I often do, with a very um, strong sense of the mystery of life, both in its beauty and also in how difficult it is to live in uh, something that we don't really understand. And uh, part of the feeling I had this morning when I woke up was, I don't really understand what I do. I don't understand. I've got big questions about everything I'm up to, which can be very disorientating to be in. And then I come and we do this, and we do this at nine o'clock as we have done. This is 150 seconds, nine o'clock on a Sunday. And whilst we do this, I know what I'm here for. Like there's nothing, there's nowhere else to be and there's nothing else to do. There is this for its own sake, not because it will make fame or money or a big name or because it will change the world. None of those things, but because the conversation is of value, being with you is of value for its own sake and that it touches anyone else just for that. And in that regard, I want to, um, before we read the source, I want to give a, a shout out and a thank you to a very uh, lovely, wise, deep man whose name is Wim, who I know, who brought this piece to my attention this week. And uh, Wim, probably, I don't know, Wim, if you listen to us, but if you do, uh, we're having this conversation because of you and thank you. Mm -hmm. And here is our source, which uh, came from Wim, which is written by Mark Nepo. And if you ever, if you're listening and you want to be able to read the sources yourself or share them with other people, they're always on our Facebook group, but you can always find them by the time you listen to the podcast or watch a recording, it will be on our Turning Towards Life little microsite, which is turningtowards.life. You can find all 150 sources and all 151, all of those conversations are there as well. A great archive, many hours of you and I, Lizzie doing this so here we go it's from uh, mark nepo's book uh, the book of awakening much of our anxiety and inner turmoil comes from living in a global culture whose values whose values drive us from the essence of what matters at the heart of this is the conflict between the outer definition of success and the inner value of peace unfortunately we are encouraged even trained to get attention when the renewing secret of life is to give attention. From performing well on tests to positioning ourselves for promotions, we are schooled to believe that to succeed, we must get attention and be recognized as special. When the threshold to all that is extraordinary in life opens only when we devote ourselves to giving attention, not getting it. Things come alive for us only when we dare to see and recognize everything as special. The longer we try to get attention instead of giving it, the deeper our unhappiness. It leads us to move through the world dreaming of greatness, needing to be verified at every turn. When feelings of oneness grace us only when we verify the world around us, it makes us desperate to be loved when we sorely need the medicine of being loving. One reason many of us are lonely in our dream of success is that instead of looking for what is clear and true, we learn to covet what is great and powerful. And one reason we live so far from peace is that instead of loving our way into the nameless joy of spirit, we think fame will soothe us. And while we're busy dreaming of being a celebrity, we stifle our need to see and give love, all of which opens us to the true health of celebration. It leaves us with these choices, fame or peace, be a celebrity or celebrate being, work all our days to be seen or devote ourselves to seeing, build our identity on the attention we can get or find our place in the beauty of things by the attention we can give. One reason so many of us are lonely in our dream of success is that instead of looking for what is clear 
and true. We learn to covet what is great and powerful. One reason we live so far from peace is that instead of loving our way into the nameless joy of spirit, we think fame will soothe us. And while we are busy dreaming of being a celebrity, we stifle our need to see and give love, all of which opens us to the true health of celebration. It leaves us with these choices, fame or peace, be a celebrity or celebrate being, work all our days to be seen or devote ourselves to seeing. Build our attention, uh, sorry, build our identity on the attention we can get or find our place in the beauty of things by the attention we can give. Goodness, I, I'm so pleased that Mark Nepo wrote about this because I think he's onto something, Lizzie, that is so poisonous and so pernicious and so painful that I feel I can really recognize myself in what he's saying in, in the mistake here. Um, and one of the ways it shows up for me, so sometimes it shows up as, you know, with this podcast, with this work we're doing, <gasps> more people are listening. <gasps> what, what would it be like to have a hundred thousand people listening instead of a thousand or 2000? What would it be? So that, and it, it, in, in one way, there's a kind of, could be a generosity in that, but I can feel the part of me that goes, then we'll have made it, you know, then. So I can really feel this in him, in me. And the other part of it that I'm feeling really touched by in hearing you reading is seeing how many different forms this takes. So some people, you know, some of us get into, I'll be properly famous, you know, I'll be a celebrity. And some of us get into, I don't know, I'll be, properly rich or I'll have a house that people can marvel at or I'll have you know those will be our dreams all of which take us away from ourselves in the way that Mark Nepo says but I think that there are other forms of it as well so I know that one of my sort of um traps in this is oh I'll be a person who lives a life that's really deep and meaningful and brackets is the most important bit about Mark Nepo's thing is not because of the life that that will bring me but because of people what will because of what people will say about me for being that person. That's the, whatever it is, whether it's fame or wealth or, um, or being seen in a particular way, they're all this point that he makes about building our identity on the attention we can get, whatever mm -hmm. form it is that to, to, um, to live our lives that way always takes us far from ourselves mm. and I can feel it in myself that there's a way when I let that go and I'm glad to say that there are definitely times when I feel like I'm free of that way that we've all been taught and we've all been trained then I find out much much more what my life is really for and it's often for something really simple telling telling the truth that's here taking care of someone who I love, marveling at something. It's um, a much a much simpler life becomes apparent, but not just a much simpler life, Lizzie. Um, uh, one in which the whatever contribution it is that I can give, that I can bring to the world because of my unique presence and the unique way that I see and pay attention, that starts to come through and I get I get freed of the, all of the wrangles and all of the twists and all of the, <gasps> am I doing the right thing? And will I ever make all of those kind of fear things? And um, I can see as I'm saying this to you that it really does seem true to me that we are schooled in and then we keep going very, very easily a kind of deeply fear-based orientation to the world, which is unless I, unless I can be seen in a very particular way, everything will fall apart, my whole life will be worthless. And um, how much that gets, how much that gets in the way of maybe what it is that I'm called to be just isn't any of those things. Mm. The unique person that I am doesn't fit any of those categories. And how beautiful it is when we meet 
when we meet somebody who whenever we're graced by the presence of someone who is not doing the getting attention but is bringing themselves generously and with with their own attention to the world how touched we are and how enlivened we are and how beautiful it is to be in their presence my goodness it feels like a very big conversation this one and interestingly the line that sticks out and that uh, somehow responds to what you're saying for me is that we get to love our way into the nameless joy of spirit like somehow that line really moves me because I can see that there are so many times where Like I project that, like you were saying, the thing that I think is going to bring me what I'm looking for is going to bring me what I'm looking for. <laughs> and so often what brings me what I'm looking for is not that. It's loving my way into the nameless joy of spirit that brings me what I'm looking for. And yet I keep doing the... I keep making the demand of things to bring me what they can't bring me. Like, if I go here, I'll feel that way. If I do this, this will what this is what will happen. And I'll receive this. And all the while, while I try and get something from the surface of things, if you like, from the from the places of achievement, success, doing stuff that I think is gonna, I don't know, make my life worthwhile or something. It's like, um, like each time there's a disillusionment that has to happen and what's left is loving my way. <laughs> Cause it never delivers in the way that I think it's gonna deliver. Like my personality's version of fulfillment doesn't ever come, but just this thought of, of loving my way into the nameless joy of spirit, I can feel that that's really what I'm yearning for. So my question in all of this is, you know, how, how can I receive my life, myself, as the thing I'm seeking and stop doing the thing that repeatedly leads me down a kind of dissatisfying path where I'm, I'm demanding that things bring me joy rather than being bringing me joy or circumstances bringing me satisfaction rather than finding satisfaction inherently in this interaction that I'm in right now. And for me, this whole passage has got to do with yeah, receiving myself, being a person who is in receipt of this, this life that I am and all that's around me and letting it in. Because I can also see all the things you were saying, Justin, are a kind of defense against self-receiving. Like if I do all those things, I don't have to sit here and wonder who I am and what this piece of life is. And yet I know when I do do that, it's the most interesting, compelling, full, warm, ever erupting creativity that I find. But I do all kinds of ridiculous things that, that take me away from that because somehow I don't believe it. Somehow I feel like if I would turn towards myself, there would be nothing there. And yet the opposite is true and I still keep doing it and so I feel really called back into this field I guess of of really living and when I say living I don't mean having everything I want to have or going everywhere I want to go but I really mean 
letting letting here be letting here have my attention letting what's arising have my full warm interested curious heart turn towards it and really being with this tree and this sunlight and the feeling of the grass beneath my feet, for example. And I feel so grateful for the kind of gentle writing that this is that doesn't shame us for fantasizing about 50,000 followers or something or whatever the the destination we might be lured into thinking would make us feel whole, but that gently invites us into poetic language to describe what it is to be here, to be in this body, in this moment now, and to let life live us. I think your language of receiving here, Lizzie, is so important and I'm really grateful for it. So to, to as Mark Nepo says, to um, find our place in the beauty of things by the attention we can give. It seems to me that that attention is both a way that we direct ourselves and pay attention to you what it's like to be with you, or I can pay attention to myself and my own experience, or I can pay attention to the sunlight that is crossing your face, or I can... And that to give attention is also to receive, to attend is a way of opening ourselves. You can't attend in that way without receiving. I don't know what it would be to give attention without. But why I'm making a big deal of it is I, I, um, I don't think that's receiving for most of us is part of our culture. Mm. I think that we have a, a sort of very sort of ground level, like right from the start, right from the get go in our lives, we have a, a model of what it is to be a human that is to do with our, what we will do in the world to, to, to um, attain or to get or to achieve or to be noticed all of which have their place, right? So the acting in the world, of course, really matters. But the the thing that I can feel from what you said is we make that the definition of being a human. What are you going to do? How are you going to get noticed? Not this absolutely fundamental, exquisite and necessary part of aspect of being a human, which is that we are in receipt. Mm. We're in receipt of our lives, like you said. We're it's it's a really radical and beautiful notion to see that we're in receipt of we are in receipt of our own lives. Mm. There is a life that arises here uniquely in this body and in these relationships and in this circumstance that comes through right here. Will I will I receive it? Mm. And then there's the receipt of one another. Can I receive your presence? And can I receive the presence of the desk that I'm sitting at and the house that I'm in and the somehow I think that we've somehow I think that we've made receiving in our highly fast moving progress oriented grasping fearful culture we've made receiving something to be frightened of or something to turn away from mm. And when we learn to receive, it's also true that we end up very easily being way more generous. Like if we can receive the love that comes through us, we can give it. And if we receive the words that come through us, we can gift them. Mm -hmm. And if we receive the wonder that we experience, we can share it. So, so really life, life only comes through us in that way with its sort of deep generosity to the extent that we're prepared to be in receipt of that which is coming through us. And that's the thing that I think is, is missing. We don't, we don't so easily see ourselves as sort of um, 
a conduit or a place through which life flows we see ourselves much more as separate mm -hmm. i don't know separate atoms that have to somehow claw our way through the world and that yes. produces all of this and i was really moved by this thinking god you know that oh what it is just now talking to you to receive you without having to do anything to have you or this conversation be a different way mm -hmm. and to receive me me to receive me just as i am without this conversation having to be or my experience having to be any other way and something is born that feels like love to me mm -hmm. yeah what's arising for me as you say that justin is the i could feel my this word efforting popping up you know all the times i'm trying to give or trying to get you know those two two sides of the same coin and then from what you're saying i get this curiosity of well if I put both of those things down, what arises is really different. So all the ways that I try, all the ways that I do my best to kind of generate things, there's a kind of pushing, whether I'm trying to get something or whether I'm trying to give something, there's a kind of pushing in that, a kind of forcing somehow. And I'm feeling this invitation to notice my efforting, either when I'm trying to get or trying to give and see whether I can step into the third place in that, which feels to me in this moment like just letting all of that go for a minute and stopping and seeing it and, no and no noticing what it's like in my body as well. I often feel like a, like a pressure from the inside in my chest that, that's pushing me through life. That's telling me I have to do more. I have to be more. I have to get more done or I have to achieve more or be in some different place than I am right now. And in my body, it comes as a kind of pushing from the inside of my chest. I often get that when I'm driving. Like I should be going faster, I should be getting there quicker, I should be, this journey should be more efficient or something. And I can feel the relief as you were just talking there, Justin, of like, oh, I actually have the choice to put that down. And it will arise again and I can gently see it and take a breath and pay attention even to that pushing and then as I bring my attention to the pushing and it's not just a sleepless pushing pushing me along but I, my attention can reside there for a little while and I can breathe into it I have an option of receiving my life in that moment I have an option of letting in whatever is here which in the pushing I'm not even seeing or feeling what's here I'm, I'm away with the fairies or out to lunch or whatever the saying is, but like I'm, I'm definitely not in receipt of my life in those moments where I'm pushing my way through because I'm trying to give or I'm trying to get or I'm trying to achieve or I'm trying to, essentially I'm trying to be somewhere else. You can see that in this moment, like there's something inherently dissatisfied that's having me do that but the dissatisfaction when I really turn inwards doesn't actually exist. It's like, a, it's like a fake thing that's pushing me to push. And so I feel very grateful for the reflection time and the, the turning towards these questions of seeking and being culturally turned towards power and greatness it's so ingrained and it comes out in all the ways that you were talking about at the beginning of this conversation Justin and when those things are named all those versions of power and greatness I get to 
be more aware of them when they arise and have a choice as to whether I pursue those well-worn deadening avenues for me or I can choose to take a breath and let life be here and live me now. I um, can see that we're right at the time for us to end and I, I want to I want to end by remembering someone. So I, I had an aunt, she was a great aunt. One of many great aunts and uncles in my family. There's a big, large number of them. No, none of them any longer alive. And her name was Ada. She must have died maybe 25 or more years ago. And she was one of those people, Lizzie, who in her presence, what I could feel and what so many people said about her was uh, just how interested she was in other people. But I don't mean in some efforting, needy, identity-making way that Mark Nepo points to at the end, but simply by bringing her attention to whoever she was with. Mm. And it was so life-giving to be in her presence, to feel what it was like to be with someone who was up to this who was up to bringing her attention to what and who was here. Yeah. And I can still feel it in my own body, the feeling of relief of what it is to be loved by life coming through, not loved as a project or loved as a means to get something, simply loved by the presence of one life being in the presence of another life. And I mm -hmm. feel like this is one of the places that I, I learned something of what Mark Nepo is talking about from another human. Mm. So I'm, I'm remembering her mm. this morning whilst we're talking and feeling how present she still is yeah. in my life, even, even long after the body that lived this life was, has gone. Mm. And I'm, I can see also Lizzie that this project, this practice is a much better word that we're up to that we're in our 152nd week of is a practice with this intention is to bring our attention to one another and bring att our attention to ourselves and to life and in the process see what comes for half an hour on a sunday morning and then share it mm -hmm. and i'm i'm very very glad that we have an opportunity to do that together mm -hmm. thank you justin mm -hmm. thank I'm you everyone feeling the gift mm -hmm. of auntie ava is it ava did you say ada ada auntie ada I can feel the gift of that right now. It's very yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lizzie, and thank you, everyone, for being with us. And um, it's our intention to continue. Um, please do tell people who you love, who you think would love to be part of this conversation, where they can find us and where they can find this. And uh, we'll look forward to reading you all who participate in the conversation on Facebook. We'll head over there later and take a look and um, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, okay. everyone. <laughs>